right? Uh, the objective of this video is uh, to understand a simulation of a two-dimensional Rayleigh-Taylor instability problem in ANSYS Fluent. The Rayleigh-Taylor instability phenomena is actually uh, a hydrodynamic instability which arises when a higher density fluid is placed over a low density fluid under a gravitational force field. The RTI phenomena was initially introduced by Rayleigh in the year about 1883 and later it was also observed for all accelerated fluids by Taylor in the year 1950. So, when the density interface is disturbed, hydrostatic pressure is generated so that the heavier fluid moves downwards and mixes with the lighter fluid. So that's the basic flow of how, or a basic understanding of how an RTI comes into play. So the purpose of this video is to understand how the simulation runs and uh, how the things uh, further develop let's have a look at that but before we understand about the simulation uh, let us understand what atwood number is atwood number is basically the ratio of the difference in the fluid densities divided by their sum respectively and uh, for atwood numbers in an rt instability flow when it is closer to 1, which is in this particular case, when it is closer to 1, then the much lighter fluid, which is below this heavier fluid, it takes the form of bubbles and it rises up into the heavier fluid and the heavier fluid is going to traverse its way into the lighter fluid and it's going to be accelerated as the flow uh, keeps on uh, growing. So before we start with the simulation or before we run the simulation in this, let me just uh, talk a little about the uh, meshing and the geometry. So the geometry is just a simple 20 mm by 20 mm uh, square, which is air surface. And this is another 20 by 20 mm square, which is water surface. And when this interface is disturbed, things are going to happen and we will be studying that. Regarding meshing, the mesh size selected is about 0.1 mm in size which is quite refined for the analysis and it conforms with the actual physics of the problem. The elements, the number of elements for this particular geometry comes to about 80,000 with a mesh size of 0.1 which is well below 500,000 or half a million which is the maximum limit that I can work on in ANSYS, uh, this, this, the student version. So the basic uh, case setup that has been taken, uh, that has been chosen and selected is a pressure based solver has been chosen with absolute velocity being used. This is a transient state uh, uh, problem and a compressible fluid flow is taken uh, is chosen the gravity is also enabled in a negative y direction which is minus 9.81 meter per second square this is also a multi-phase problem with volume of fluid model and number of eulerian phases are two so which is air at the bottom and water at the top and also this is an implicit formulation and not an explicit one the phases chosen are air and water as discussed and uh, patching needs to be done but before that the viscous model chosen is laminar patching is uh, required and patching is uh, done for a volume fraction of two phases before the start of simulation the phase used for patching of water with a volume fraction of 1 and uh, for the water surface and 0 for the air surface. This is an important step in order to get this contour. 
then in 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 methods we have few other uh, things that needs to be taken care of for example the pressure velocity coupling scheme chosen is simple the uh, second order reference scheme is chosen for momentum calculations and for pressure calculations the presto is selected uh, for the transient formulation the first order implicit scheme is chosen which gives better results and also for stability and conversions so how i can put this is i can put this in this way this video or this simulation which was analyzed i have divided into five or six different phases depending on the uh, time step size chosen the type of time advancement and this is for educational purposes I have played around with the time advancement so the first time advancement I took is adaptive because from literature and papers we do find that when the time step is quite high uh, the time step size delta t is quite large then at that particular uh, at higher values of delta t the solution tends to blow up or diverge which will give us wrong answers or the solution just goes uh, crazy so in this first phase of video i have chosen an adaptive type of time step because uh, the software it reduces the delta t value if the current number uh, crosses some stipulated value so the first case i took is an adaptive time step with a current number of 1.5 this was the current number and by default influence this number is taken as 2 but smaller values may be required for more accurate solution and more stable numerical calculations in some cases uh, you may need to reduce this up to 0.5 and for accurate results and all this is because the uh, time step size delta t so eventually the cfl number or the current number it should be small enough to get accurate results conforming with the actual physics of the flow also the initial time step size chosen is uh, 1 e to the power negative 3 which was reduced further by the software as the global current number kept on increases increasing so in this particular simulation after a few time steps starting from 1 e to the power negative 3 as stated here uh, the global uh, the global current number increased to about 15 or something and eventually the time step size delta t kept on reducing by it, that was done by the software itself and it was reduced to a value of in the range of uh, 1 e to the power negative 5 or so which is really small this saves the simulation from blowing up but it also increases the computational time and cost considerably other method is to assume an educated fixed time step size and see if the solution does not diverge but if it does then we have to repeat the calculation with reducing the delta t however this method is taken care of by choosing an adaptive style for the first few iterations and of course the side effect of this is uh, that the low values of delta t's are uh, the there are low, lower values of delta t if the poor number increases which it did in this particular case now an important point to remember is the flow time which is the product of uh, the time steps and the step size which is delta t the direct corollary of uh, the step size reduction is the reduction in flow time simulated or analyzed this of course increases the number of time steps to reach an equilibrium eventually increasing the simulation time and computational cost again so in a nutshell for the first 100 time steps uh, for uh, first 100 time steps um, the following values were taken the adaptive style was chosen the initial time step was 0.001 this was the global current number and for the first 100 time steps so we can have a look at this if i do run this let's say i do run this for uh, this by the way is the number total number of time steps for which my analysis ran for 
and different uh, delta t's and different styles adaptive and fixed which i'll show in this video so if i if, if i go for about 100 time steps if you see the the simulation started quite fast but then the delta t values reduced uh, quite drastically till about 100 after 100 i changed the global core number here to a value of 0.9 at this particular point because then i wanted my delta t value to increase so the software did eventually increase the delta t values so if we try to go back from 100 we see till 100 the progress is quite slow but once 100 is crossed it gets a bit faster for the next this happens for the next 200 iterations so this i say is the phase two of my video and uh, one can witness an increase in speed in the simulation this was because this uh, the current number is 0.9 this led to a gradual increase in the step size and uh, this was run for about 200 iterations which means that the total time time steps at the end of phase 2 would be 300 done after 300 what we see is this is the third phase of the video which was analyzed for about 1600 time steps with fixed type of time advancement now the time advancement was changed to fixed and the delta t chosen was about 5 e to the power negative 4 that was about i think uh, this value 5 e to the power negative 4 and uh, this was done to ensure that the solution doesn't blow up this can be witnessed by actually an increase in the simulation speed if you see that once my number of time steps they cross 300 the simulation further increases because the delta t has increased and this is going to run for about 1600 time steps so the total time steps at the end of phase 3 of my video is about 1900. The next phase which after crossing 1900 after this value which is running at 600 something right now. Once that crosses the value of 1900 then the phase 4 of the video starts and it is run for about 630 time steps with yet an increased uh, delta t value of 1 e to the power negative 3 which was the initial time step size i had chosen using an adaptive type of uh, time advancement the reason for gradually increasing the step size every few time steps is just to ensure solution does not blow up as is evident from literature and said discussed earlier that the solution does flow up, uh, blow up for finer meshes at the beginning of the simulation if we choose a wrong value of delta t this can also be understood by the fact that the step size reduced in the first 100 or 300 number of time steps when we used an adaptive type of uh, time advancement so that was uh, phase 4 which will start at 1900 time steps and will end at about 2530 time steps 2530 and you can witness even an increase in the simulation because delta t in that fourth phase is about uh, 0 0.001 which is greater than 5 e to the power negative 4 so let's have a look at that as well so let 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 the uh, number of time steps cross 1900 and we can in, uh, witness phase 4 of this video then we'll discuss about phase 5 as well so right now it's going to cross 1900 and there we go oh, see now the simulation has increased even uh, it's it's faster now and um, the phase 5 of the video which will run after about 25 30 time steps this was run for almost the remaining entirety of the simulation with a delta t value of 5 e to the power negative 3 which is even greater than uh, 1 e to the power negative 3 so a few of the ending time steps were also run at 0.1 value of delta t to increase the flow time and honestly just to ensure an equilibrium condition has whether an equilibrium condition has reached or not this though cannot be visualized the last 0.1 delta t it cannot be visualized from the video as the changes are very negligible 
so about after 25 30 we see an increase see we see an increase in the value uh, in, in the simulation because delta t has further increased to 1 e to the power negative 3 so this is actually uh, sorry 5 e to the power negative 3 and this is the phase 5 of my video and phase 6 and phase 5 could be understood or uh, assumed as just one phase where in the right now the delta t value is 5 e negative 3 and later on it becomes 1 e negative 1 so this actually uh, is uh, done because uh, we want to increase the flow time as the delta t kept on increasing eventually the flow time uh, increased else uh, if we do it with adaptive we will need a very long time for to simulate it for about uh, three to four seconds of actual real world simulation and this in this particular case i have done it for about 11 or 12 seconds of real world uh, simulation and the number of iterations it took was about 70 or 72 thousand iterations and this is for air and water wherein the density difference is quite pronounced in this particular case so we need to have a look at that as well and uh, I'm going to make another video in which I'm going to be using water as well as some user defined customized fluid with a density of about 400 so the density difference is not much in that particular case there we go that's the end so i don't think um, that was more pronounced the fifth and the sixth phase where the delta d value did change a lot but this is how it was for water and air hope uh, this is enough for having a better understanding now we could uh, i could make another video for water as well as a user defined uh, customized fluid with much lesser difference between the densities but uh, as a conclusion I can say that for output number close to one which is in this particular case we do understand that large amplitude of perturbations can be witnessed and that can be witnessed uh, actually at the beginning itself if you have a look at this this is a very large value of perturbations and when the atwood number is closer to the zero what we actually see are finger like structures at this point of time which could not be witnessed here and i hope they can be witnessed in another video uh, where the density of difference is not much so this actually is taking place because there is a larger density ratio of the two fluids and because of that stronger flu uh, forces they develop at the interface instability and that's about it thank you